welcome, welcome to what? To crucify the flesh. Magnify the Holy Spirit. Get your Bibles, get your Bibles. Hallelujah. Magnify the Holy Spirit and glorify God. As we study the Word of God together, amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. I hope you have your Bibles. We are in the book of Matthew, chapter 17. Sister Patricia, daughters, thank you so much for tuning in. Eddie Fields, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. You could have been doing something else with your time, but you stopped by to study the word of God. Well, Pastor King, thank you so much. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Sister Kalita, for being on the line tonight. Let me see who else. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. We're making Georgia. Crucify the flesh. This flesh is a mess. It wants to do what it wants to do. It wants to say what it wants to say. It wants to do everything <laughs> apart from God. You say, Pastor, why did God create it? So we can learn to get it up under, up under subjection to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and walk with me on this journey as we study the word of God together. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to study the word of God with you tonight. I hope you have your Bibles. Get your Bibles. Hallelujah. We've been studying the book of Matthew. Well, we'll be studying Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels. But as you know, the book of Matthew is pretty long. And I tell you, I am enjoying it. I don't know about you. But I'm allowing it to take root in my heart, in my soul, in my, in, in, in my inner man, so I can be more like Christ. Amen? I tell you. And we become more like Christ. We become less, be less of us and more of him getting the glory out of our lives. And we learn to be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. You know, that's what the word of God tells us. God is a good God. He's a faithful God. He's a merciful God. There is no one like him. We serve a mighty God, Prince of Peace, Abba Father. Oh, glory to your name, God. I pray that some more would get on, but some are traveling uh, already, going to see their families, you know. I know I talked to a pastor out of Cremor, and they are taking a break. You know, they they're on break. <laughs> yes, they got their own break and uh, vacation, I guess you would call it. Hallelujah. Well, we're not on vacation. We're going to study the word of God tonight. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. I hope you have your Bibles. I always tell you. <clears throat> Don't take my word for it. You want to get be in the habit of getting in the word yourself and learning to study his word so you can know when you hear it, you know it to be true. Amen. For our review tonight, we studied in Matthew 16, verse 27 through 28. It made us aware um, of this. It said, for the son of man is going to come in the glory and majesty of his father with his angels. 
and then he will repay each one in accordance. So we ended uh, with that scripture. So beloved, uh, we were made aware in verses 27 to 28 of Matthew 16 that Jesus Christ has been given the authority to judge all the earth. He's been given the authority. God gave his only begotten son the authority to judge the earth. Romans 4. Welcome, Brother Larry Walton. Walton? Walston? Oh, you're going to get me straight. I know, but I, I sometimes mess up names. But thank you, Brother Larry. Thank you, Brother Larry, for tuning in tonight. Brittany, welcome. You must heard me talking about when I came to your church. And I was talking about your husband. He didn't know who I was and what he had uh, uh, prophesied to me sitting there. Had never seen me before. Believe it or not, he was the second one to give me the same prophecy. And I've gotten it two more times since then. Because I was up yesterday morning early and this morning early in the wee hours of the morning praying to God about some things as it relates to the ministry. So I am, good evening, I am grateful for coming to your church. I was just talking to another pastor about what your husband had prophesied in my life. And he was the second one and I never met him. And how he came out of the office and we were getting ready. I think he was uh, being ordained or had already been ordained. I can't remember. It's been a while. And Brittany was the lady that I, that I would go to the front desk and she would sign me in to get radiation treatments. And it was just something about her spirit. It drew me. And I, I said, when I get well, when I get better, I'm going to come and, and visit your church because she was telling me about her husband and they, what they had gone through and what and what they were doing. And I said, I'm going to come. And I drove. I was so proud. I drove by myself and I walked in and they were just so wonderful to me. And her husband was in the back and I had just gotten one prophecy. And then he came back, never met me and prophesied in my life the same exact thing. And I want you to make him aware, Sister Brittany, that since then, I have recently, a couple of weeks before the, my book signing, my sister and I book signing, um, I got a prophecy that coincided with your husband and the other apostle said. And then I got one today. And I, it just brought tears to my eyes because I've been in prayer about the ministry. So get ready for the ones who said they wanted to be a part. Get ready, get ready, get ready, because God is getting ready to do some great things. Amen. He keep bring, he brings confirmation. Like I told you, prophecy. If someone prophesies in your life and in, in your relationship with God, see, you've been in relationship with God and you've been talking to God about some things and God loves you. What concerns you concerns him and you, 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 you pondering it within yourself and talking to him. And then someone comes along and use one of the fivefold ministry gifts, which is the gift of prophecy and begin to bring confirm. It's called confirmation. Begin to confirm what God has told you. And that's what happened to me today. I tell you, it blessed me. You know, I, I was just tired. I needed some rest as the Lord. I was up early this morning, finishing up the Bible study and, um, and yeah, so Brittany, sister Brittany, uh, come on and help the church. Okay. <laughs> Great things. Yes, ma'am. I'm all, I most definitely will. Please do. And that beautiful daughter, thank you so much for being on tonight. So I just wanted to share that. See, God is using that man of God. He never seen me a day in his life. And the other lady as well. I was invited, I went to my, with my oldest sister, Felicia, and another lady to this church in Danville when I, not too long, had gotten out the hospital. Had been out for a little while, but, and, she, and I can't, I was telling this other prophet today, I said, I can't go anywhere and just sit down. They, they just speak. And I'm grateful to God because God, he shows me that he loves me. And he show, he will show you and he shows you that he loves you. I tell you, God is good. He is a good God. He's a faithful God. He is a provider. He's everything. We have a lot to be thankful for. 
because we have our life, our health, our strength, the, the, we, we can get up in the morning. You know, some of us might ache a little bit, but we awake. He, he woke us up. I know you think it's your, 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 your clock, your, your, your alarm clock, but I come by to tell you, my sister and brother, it was Jesus. He touched you. Amen. I tell you, sometimes the pressures, it would get such pressure when you're praying about things and seeking God, and then the pressure comes on. And I, I was explaining it to my son. I said, you might not remember the Coca-Colas that we had, and we take the top, the old ones, and you take the top off. It's so much pressure, and sometimes life. Uh, uh, bring such pressure and you believe in God for certain things and, 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 and it, it hadn't, uh, uh, manifested itself yet and the pressure on every side. I'm telling you, my sisters and brother, I felt it this weekend, this week. I was invited to a friendly, friends and family day, but I didn't make it because of the pressure and God said, you need to be still. See, so we gotta be obedient. We can't go. You know, sometimes people won't understand, but you got to be still when he tells you to be still. So I felt that pressure, but God, hallelujah, he always releases it. See, the enemy think he has the victory, but we already got, we already have the victory because he died and he rose again. And on the third day, he, he rose again and his spirit resides on the inside of us and his name is Jesus. And I come by to tell you, he said, if you be ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you before his father, which is in heaven. So don't be ashamed to tell of the goodness of Jesus and that his spirit resides on the inside of you. And ask him to help you to be obedient to him. If you're not, be open. Help me in my obedience. Help me in my weakness, Lord. I need you, God. I, I can't make it without you, God. Yes. Oh, God is a faithful God. There is no one like him. Okay, I was starting that review, but I didn't start. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We've been studying the, for the ones that just tuned in. We've been studying the four gospels. Well, we're in Matthew, so we're at the beginning of the gospel. Good, good, good evening, Sister Suburban. Hallelujah. Yeah, and so we stopped at... Um, Matthew 16, verse 27, where it makes us aware that God will be for the son of man is going to come in the glory and majesty of his father with his angels. And then he will repay each one in accordance with what he has done. You say, Pastor, we get ready to go, go into Thanksgiving. I, I really don't want to think about the judgment of God. Keep walking with because if you in him and he, you, you abide in him and his word abide in you. Hallelujah. And, and you know, and, and you going to heaven and you so glad you all right. Don't matter what we talk about as it relates to the word of God because you at peace. You have the peace which surpasses all understanding. So, beloved, we were made aware in verse 27 through 28 of Matthew 16, and this is for our review, that Jesus Christ has been given the authority to judge all the earth. Who, who has given him the authority? Let me see the Bible scholars that post. Who has given Jesus the authority to judge? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on you. Come on, sister. Let me, you don't want me to call you out. So suburban, <laughs> brother Larry, brother Patricia, who, who has given Jesus Christ the authority to judge all the earth? Yeah, go, go ahead on girl. His father, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You ready, girl? You ready to be ordained. So suburban, I've been, I've been picking on her lately. She said, the father, you are absolutely right. So beloved, we were made aware that uh, the father has given Jesus Christ, his son, the authority to judge the earth. According to Romans 14, verse 9 through 11, which reads as thus. It says, for Christ died and lived again for this reason, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Verse 10, but you... Why do you criticize your brother? Are you again? Uh, are you again? Why do you look down on your on your believing brother or regard him with contempt? 
for we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. We can't look down on one another. You might be more mature than the next person, but don't forget where we come. We can't forget where we come from. We got to pray without ceasing. We have to pray for one another. I know that sister get on your nerves. I get it. I know that brother work your nerves. You be ready to, but you got to put the love of God. He said in first, in, uh, first Corinthians 13 and 13, he said, you can have faith, hope, love, but the greatest is love. My past cutting up tonight is. So it's like, for Christ died and lived again for this reason, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But you, why do you criticize your brother? Are you again, why do you look down on your believing brother or regard him with contempt? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, who alone is judge. For it is written in scripture, uh, as I live, says the Lord, every knee, he said, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. Beloved, Paul is saying here that each person is accountable to Christ, not to others. We are accountable to Christ, not to others. Now, husband and wife, we're accountable to each other. We know, we talk about spiritual things. We, we, we know in the natural, we're accountable to one another. But Paul here, it's saying here that each person is a, accountable to Christ, doing the job, uh, 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 not to others. While the church must, must be uncompromising un in their stand against activities that, they, that are expressively forbidden by scriptures, uh, things like um, adultery, lying, cheating, uh, bribing, and, th and theft, backbiting. He said all those. He said, he said, they are forbidden, forbidden by scripture. We should not create additional rules and regulations. You know, some people want to make up some stuff. But Paul, he lets us know that we should not uh, create additional rules and regulation, regulations and give them equal standing with God's law. Mm -hmm. God's law makes us aware of what? The ones that's been with me for a while. God's law makes us aware of what? Mm -hmm. Because he's saying right here, he said, while the church must be uncompromising in our stand against activities that are, that are expressly forbidden by scripture, things like adultery, lying, cheating, bribing, and theft. We should not create additional rules and regulations and give them equal standing with God's law. The law makes us aware of what? What is adultery? What is lying? Mm -hmm. The law makes us aware of sin. So at times Christians base, we base, well, some of us base our moral judgments on opinion, personal dislikes, or cultural biases. Uh-huh. Some people have some, we, we all have a little biases, bias in us. Cultural, we have, we live in different cultures. In this culture, you know, a what looking eye to eye, even a woman, a man is considered usually someone more than likely you can trust if they're going to look you in the eye. But some cultures, they forbid a woman to look a man in the eye. Mm -hmm. So it says, um, uh, at times Christian based our moral judgment on op opinion, personal dislike, or cultural biases rather than on what? The word of God. When we become born again, we base our what? Our beliefs, our opinions on what the word of God says. Because you know why? He said his word would not return unto a void, but it will accomplish what it set out to accomplish. God is a man that he cannot lie. Mm -hmm. When we do this, we show that our own faith is weak. When we base our opinions and make it, make it about us instead of the word of God, we, and we're Christian. We talk about Christians. Mm -hmm. We get caught up in our uh, cultural biases, our opinions, our judgments. It's Christians, moral judgments. Things are righteous. Those religious leaders, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. around the church. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But what about relationship with God? Spending time with him. 
See, when we come to church, it's time to worship him, honor him, praise him. But when we get home, let's get back in the word of God to, to, to learn his word, to pray and seek him. The Bible said, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added. So when we give to the ministry to go forth to win other souls, hallelujah, the Bible said, give and it shall be given, press down, shaken together, will men give into your bosom. God will touch someone's heart to sow in your life. Mm -hmm. So when we do this, we show that our own Faith is weak when we go just when we don't go by the word of God. Hallelujah. In other words, we do not think that God is powerful enough to guide his children. I have a question for you. Are you his child? Mm. Beloved, when we stand before God and give a personal account of our lives, we don't be worried about what our Christian neighbors have done. Work out your own soul salvation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10 makes us aware of this and it reads as thus. For we, many believers, will be called to account and must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may be re repaid for what has been done in the body. Whether good or bad, that is, each will be held responsible for his actions. That means believers and unbelievers. Purposes and goals, motives, the use or misuse of his time, opportunities and abilities. Uh-huh. Paul is saying here that while eternal life is a free gift given on the basis of God's grace, salvation is a free gift given by God because of his grace. But, however, Ephesians 2, verse 8 through 9 is evident that this is a free gift. It says this. It says, for it is by grace, meaning God's uh, remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life. So that lets you know that's evident that it's a gift from God through faith. And this salvation is not of yourself. Not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved, gracious gift of God. Not as a result of your words, nor your attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. It is a gift from God. You can't earn it. Hallelujah. So if you're unsure tonight that you're born again, you will have an opportunity to accept him. And or repent. Amen. We got to rest assured. We have to know that we know that we're born again. Each of us will still be judged by Christ. So he's saying we're born again, but we still will be judged by Jesus Christ of the things that we did in our body, in this body. This judgment will reward us for how we have lived. God's gracious gift of salvation does not free us from requirement of faithful obedience. All Christians must give an account of the day of, ju day of judgment for how they have lived. Matthew 16, verse 27. Uh, and I repeat, because we studied this last week, chapter 16. It said, for the Son of Man is going to come in his glory and majesty of his Father with his angels. And then he will repay each one in accordance with what he has done. We were made aware, beloved, that although his judgment is already working in our lives, a future final judgment awaits when we return in which everyone's lives will be reviewed and evaluated. According to Matthews, I'm not going to go into Matthews 25 because we're going to get there. Matthews, but if you want to go ahead, according to Matthews 25 verses 31 through 46. And this will uh, not be confirmed, I mean, confined to unbelievers. Keep walking with me, with me. Beloved, the disciples were eyewitness. They walked with Jesus. They talked with Jesus. So they were eyewitness to the power and glory of Christ's kingdom. So if you are his disciples today, beloved, you too will be eyewitness to the power and glory of Christ's kingdom. I tell you, I saw the, I saw his glory this today. He used one of his available vessels in my life 
and tears just came up in my eyes because I knew what she was talking about and she didn't even know me but God used her because he showed me once again and he'll show you hallelujah I gotta make it personal because you know I have a relationship with him and I'm I'm praying to him and he used someone that don't usually talk to me hallelujah that has spoken to me but they begin to speak in my life what, what I was talking to God about and no one knew God is faithful he loves us and he will confirm what he said to you I encourage you to pray without ceasing now for the new information hallelujah I hope you have Matthew's chapter 17 by now that was our review <laughs> Hallelujah. Now for the new information. The topic of discussion tonight, the transfiguration. The question I would like for you to ponder, do you believe in transfiguration? Mm. The scripture reference, as I previously stated, Matthew chapter 17. Let me give you a little background information. The transfiguration was a vision. It was a vision, a brief glimpse of the true glory of the king. This was a special revelation of Jesus' di divinity to three of the disciples. And it, and it was God's affirmation, affirm, affirm, affirmation of everything Jesus had done and was about to do. Verse 1, so Jesus Christ, uh, God allowed these three disciples, and I will let you know as we, as we get further down in the text who they were. Some of you already know. <laughs> so verse 1 through 3 of Matthew 17, verses 1 through 3, reads as thus. It says, six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John. There it is. That's the three. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, the brother of James, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. See, you got to have a few people that's close to you, that you know got your back. They're going to pray for you. They're going to pray with you. They're going to cover you. Hallelujah. So six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, the brother of James, and led them up on a high mountain for, by themselves. And his appearance changed dramatically in their presence. Talking about trans, uh, trans whew, hallelujah, help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> and his face shone with heavenly glory, clear and bright like the sun, and his clothing became as white as light. They saw the vision. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them. Keep walking with me, talking with Jesus. So James, Peter, James, and John went up on a high mountain with Jesus. Uh-huh. We're talking about the transfiguration. Hallelujah. And they see a heavenly glory, clear and bright like the sun, and his clothing became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah, can you imagine, appeared. These two people appeared uh -huh, to them, talking with Jesus. Moses and Elijah, beloved, were the two greatest prophets of the Old Testament. Moses represents the law or the Old Covenant, hallelujah. You know what it is, Sister Suburban. The Old Covenant is the Old Testament. Uh -huh. He wrote the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch is the first five books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And he predicted the coming of a great prophet. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 18, verse 15 through 19 made us aware of this. Makes us aware of this. And it reads as thus. It says, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, meaning Moses, from among you, from your countrymen, brothers, brethren. You shall listen to him. Verse 16, this is according to all that you ask of the Lord your God. 
at Herod, meaning Mount Sinai, on the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear the voice of the Lord my God again, nor see this great fire anymore, so that I would not die. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, the Lord said to me, they have spoken well. I will arise up and I will raise up a prophet from among the countrymen like you. And I will put my words. Jesus said, he said, I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. It shall come about that whoever will not listen to my words, which he shall speak in my name. I myself will require it of him and there will be consequences. Say with me, God is a God of love, but he's a God of judgment. Mm. The question that comes to mind, beloved, is who is the pro who is this prophet? Was well, Stephen used verse 15 to support his claim that Jesus Christ is God's son, the Messiah, according to Acts 7 verse 37 which reads as thus it says this this is the Mo this is the Moses who said to the children of Israel God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your countrymen the the my sisters and brothers the Jews originally thought this prophet was Joshua alone but Moses was also prophesying about the coming Messiah Beloved, the coming of Jesus Christ to earth was not an all an afterthought, but part of God's original plan. If you agree with it, say amen. Beloved, some think that, that uh, Jesus was just a prophet. Yeah, he prophesied, but he was the one, the, the one sent to die on the cross for you and I. So he wasn't just a prophet. So, beloved, Elijah represents the prophets who foretold the coming of the Messiah, according to Malachi 4, 5 through 6, which reads as thus. He said, Behold, I am going to send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to, your, to their children. He said he will return the hearts of uh, uh, of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. You say, Pastor, what he's talking about? He's talking about reconciliation produced by what? When people are reconciled, they, they have a repentant heart. He said he's going to return the, the, the children back to their fathers and the fathers back to their children. So it's a time of re reconciliation uh, uh, which produces repentance. So that I will not come and strike the land with a curse of complete destruction. Moses and Elijah's presence with Jesus confirmed Jesus uh, mis, uh, what his mission was. His mission to fulfill God's law and the words of God's prophets. I come by the oh God, I just got a revelation. We're talking about prophecy tonight, about prophets said Elijah and Moses, and God allowed me to be prophesied to today. I tell you, get in relationship with God because he gets the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Hallelujah. I was up early this morning, morning studying this word, and it just came to me. I was just talking to you about it. God is a good God. He's a faithful God. Get committed to him. Get connected to the lifeline, which is the Holy Scripture, and be determined that you're going to grow in the things of God, hallelujah, because judgment will come and we will be held accountable for what we do say, me and you, hallelujah. I want to hear him say, you should want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter ye in, amen, amen. So Moses and Elijah's present with presence with Jesus confirmed Jesus' who mission to fulfill God's law and the words of God's prophets. Just as God's voice in the clouds over Mount Sinai gave authority to the law given to Moses, according to Exodus 19, verse 9. Hallelujah. Verse 9 of Matthew 17 goes on to say this. 
It says, the Lord said to Moses, behold, I will come to you in a thick cloud so that the people may hear when I speak with you <clears throat> and may believe and trust in you forever. Then Moses repeated the words of the people to the Lord. <coughs> to the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 9 of Matthew 17. He said, the Lord said to Moses, behold, I will come to you in a thick cloud so that the people may hear when I speak with you and may believe and trust in you forever. Then Moses, Moses repeated the words of the people to the Lord. So Moses preceded Joshua when Joshua, wait a minute, that's not right. Joshua preceded Moses. Let me, let me just stay focused here. I'm getting ready to get off. Hallelujah. So Moses was told to consecrate the people. This meant getting them physically and spiritually ready to meet God. The people were to set, you know, a good example of that is when pastors are led to call uh, uh, three, day, th three days of prayer or maybe a week of prayer. It's a prayer of consecration to, to get ready uh, for God. You know, God might might be might be speaking to your leader about something for the for the body, amen. And he shared it with you. And he said, We need to come together, be unified, hallelujah, be a unified body and pray. Because one will put a thousand in flight, two will put ten thousand in flight. Because anytime you do something for the Lord, opposition usually will come because the enemy, he's the prince of the air. He goes and to seek whom he may devour, anyone that won't cause confusion. But God, when you have several believers to come, come together, he said one will put a thousand in flight, but two individuals will put 10,000 in flight. Can you imagine with several coming together? Hallelujah. So the people were to set themselves apart from sin and even ordinary daily routines in order to dedicate themselves to God. The act of washing and preparing served to get their minds and hearts ready. When we, need, when we meet God for worship, we should set aside the cares and preoccupation of everyday life. Use your time of physical preparation to get your mind ready to meet God. Beloved, God's voice at the transfiguration gave authority to Jesus, Jesus' words. God's voice at the transfiguration gave authority to Jesus' words. Verse 4, whoo, hallelujah. God, whoo, he said his voice gave. <laughs> God's voice, whoo, at the tra uh, transfiguration gave authority to Jesus' voice, excuse me, his words. Verse 4 of Matthew 17 goes on to say this. It says, Then Peter began to speak and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good and delightful and fortunate that we are here. If you wish, I will put up three uh, uh, tents here. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter wanted uh, to build three shelters for these three great men. Peter had the right idea about Jesus, but his timing was wrong. Some of us can be members of church. We can have a good, pure heart, but your timing might be wrong. Keep walking with me. Peter wanted to act, but this was a time for worship and adoration. That's why it's good to get in relationship with God because we need to know God will let us know the right time. It's time to move now or it's not time to move right now. What you want to do for the man and woman of God is good, but the timing, this is the time to worship and adore me, King of King and Lord of Lords. So Peter wanted to act, but this was a time for worship and adoration. He wanted to memorize the moment, but he was supposed to learn and move on. Sometimes as individuals, we have good intention just as Peter, but the timing wasn't, isn't right. It was a time of worshiping and adoration, meaning to esteem, hallelujah, and respect the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Oh, Father, we, the, the, the man of God or the woman of God said, let's just raise our hands and worship. We are born to worship you, Lord. We admire you, Lord. We honor you, God. And then you have someone where I want to do this for you, Pastor. Because you need it, Pastor. But Pastor said, let's just give him glory right now. Let's just give him honor. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what the, this is talking about, Peter. Verse 5 through 8 of Matthew 17. And it reads as follows. It said, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased and delighted. Listen to me. Excuse me. Listen to him. Verse six. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were terrified. I know I, I would say, whoa, whoa. <laughs> but Jesus came and touched them and said, he said, get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. My sisters and brothers, what we must realize is that Jesus is more than just a great leader, a good example, a good influence, or a great prophet. Mm -hmm. Beloved, he is the Son of God, Prince of Peace, Abba Father. Hallelujah. He is our provider. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, he'll show you as you, if, if, if he called you to do a thing, it's going to be tested. And if you know that he's called you to do a thing, just get ready to put on the whole arm of God and be determined that you're going to stand steadfast, unmovable, abounding as a soldier. I believe some people, one gentleman on here is a soldier. He was in the military. So he knows what I'm, no, there's a couple on here that I know about. You know what I'm talking about. So on this battle, with the, on this, who oh God, help me, Holy Spirit. On this journey with God, we have to become a soldier. Be determined to put the helmet of salvation on. To protect our minds. Because I remember, you remember I tell you that the Prince of Air, he wants to come and attack your mind. But God is giving you what you need. Hallelujah. It's him providing, supplying all your needs. He said, put on the blessed threat of righteousness. Because he knows those emotions are going to get tampered with. And he wants to be, them to be protected. And the belt of truth. Hallelujah. And put up your swords. Because when it comes. And it will come sometime through people. And it will be the least one you expect. Hallelujah. They know their hearts. They allow the enemy to use them. But you know what's going on. Because your feet is shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Which is the word of God. And you're going to stand steadfast. Unmovable in him. Woo, thank you, Holy Ghost. Woo, hallelujah. So when we truly understand. Hallelujah. That he is the son of God. When we truly understand this profound truth. Our only adequate response will be to. Worship him. Hallelujah. Because you know who he is. Woo, I was born to worship him. Hallelujah. Beloved, today some consider Jesus teaching as merely one more religious point of view. But God said to listen only to him. In other words, regard him as your authority for truth and guidance. Hallelujah. Verse 9 of Matthew 17 goes on to say this. It says, and, they, and as they were going down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, do not tell anyone what you have seen until the, the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Beloved, Jesus told Peter, James, and John not to tell anyone what they had seen until after his resurrection because he knew that they didn't fully understand 
it and could not explain what they didn't understand. Their question, their question in Matthew 17, 10 was evident that they didn't fully understand. They knew that Jesus was the Messiah, but they had much more to learn about the significance of his death and resurrection. Verse 10 through 13 of Matthew 17 makes us aware of their question. And this is what it says. It said the disciples asked him. Then why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He answered and said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has come already and they did not recognize him, but did to him as they wished. The son of man is also going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples. It'd be a shame to hang around the church all, for year, twenty over 20 years. And we don't recognize. But I come by to tell you, if you're connected, he's the vine and we're the branches. If we are connected to the vine, we're going to recognize because he's leading and guiding us. God is real. He is the judge. We have, we listening to the word of God tonight. We have to make a conscious decision that we're going to do, be obedient to God. Hallelujah. He said that the Holy Spirit's job is to help us in our weakness. Calm down, Charlie. Calm down, Pastor. Lord, have mercy. I get excited. He'll help us. Woo, glory. Mm. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It said, verse 12, verse 11, he answered and said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has come already and they did not recognize him, but, but did to him as they wish. They said, the son of man is already going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. Hallelujah. And this Based on this is based on Malachi 4, verse, verse 5 through 6, which states this. It says, Behold, I am going to send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will turn the heart of the father. They they said it was the uh, 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 ter great and terrible day of the Lord because they knew that he was going to be persecuted. He's going to be crucified, see? He said, he said, uh, uh, behold, I am going to send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. The prophet made us aware of things. They prophesied things and they will, they come to pass. Amen. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. A reconciliation produced by repentance so that I will co not come and strike the land with a curse of complete destruction. Beloved, the teachers of the Old Testament law believed that Elijah must appear before the mes Messiah would appear. Jesus was referring to John the Baptist, not the Old Testament prophet Elijah. John the Baptist took on Elijah's prophetic role. Bold, he, he took on his uh, prophetic role, boldly confronting sin. And you know, when you boldly confront sin, people don't like it. Particularly the sinful lifestyles and abuses uh, uh, of the political and religious leaders and pointing all people to God. Mm. Oh, Jesus. And some them religious leaders didn't like that. They were more a uh, call up in their tradition. Jesus. Verse 14. And you still have people like that today. Mama did it this way. Daddy did it this way. So it's got to be right. But what but God? Sometimes God will tell you to do something different. And you feel all alone. But you didn't build a relationship with him. I got sick and tired of looking at religion in my family. I said, something got to be better than this because I know this religious spirit, they admit, you know, I'm seeing some stuff. Hallelujah. And when you bold for Jesus, Moses, he became bold. Elijah, John the Baptist, came bold for Jesus. Confronted sin. Hallelujah. And we're seeing a lot of stuff now. But God, be determined, you're going to 
going to stand steadfast. Don't be surprised. Just keep walking with him. Keep praying. If you see something wrong, pray for him. But keep, keep, your, keep, who, keep looking up to the hills will come in your help. Because all of your help coming from the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. No, I thank you because it's not me. Because, Lord, I thank you for now. But I pray for so and so. But, God, you tell me that we got to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. But, God, keep, I, keep, I bring them to you. Help them, Lord. Because you said in your word, God, that the role of the Holy Spirit is to help me in my weakness. To lead and guide me. And it's not just for me. It's for all of us. All of those who can confess you and save your Lord. So Lord, I see what's going on. But I want to pray to your Father. Because there's so much going on, God. You said even the elect will be fooled. Help us, God. Not to be fooled. Help us to pray for one another. To demonstrate that love that you talk about in your word. Because Lord, you tell me in 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. I can have hope. I can have faith. But if I don't have love, I'm just making a bunch of noise. So teach me how to love. And I come by to tell you, he will teach you. Hallelujah. And this flesh has to get out of the way. Because see, some people do some stuff. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it, but you're going to do it because he's telling you to. And he loves you and he knows your heart. So he'll keep messing with you. I, I'm a living witness. I told you when I was doing matters of the heart. Done, done, I know some people done me, done me wrong. But he said, okay, you want to teach about, what was I teaching at that time? One of my shows about entrepreneurs in the community. Making a difference in our community, a positive difference in our community. Hallelujah. He said, I want you to travel up to that, that city up there. Uh-huh. And take your big videographer. And I want you to interview and let the world know the book that you bought this week. The, well, the Sunday that we had the uh, book signing. This book that you bought talks about a journey in the mat into matters of the heart. And at the bottom, if you started reading it, it gives you where you can go download the video. I ain't going to tell you who it is. <laughs> but went into that church, smiled because God had said, you want to you wanna make a positive difference. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you how to love. Like I have loved. I'm the first a person to teach you about love. So you got to bear one another's burdens. So I want you to go over there and I want you to do that interview. And I want it to go on public access so everybody will know this man of God. And I'm like, really God? Yes, you talking about a positive difference in the community. You a pastor, so you gonna do this. And I'm gonna get the glory. See, that's the kind of thing that God will do sometimes. Most of the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. So verse 14 through 17. But it's growth. God allow us to grow in him. And this, the Bible in the book of Romans tell us that the, the spirit man is all go, always going to wrestle with the flesh. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a tug of war. It's a war. But God, let God win. Let him win. Amen. Let the prince of peace win. Abba Father. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. Let him win. <laughs> Verse 14 through 17. Uh, Matthew 17. The disciples had been unable to drive out a demon. And this, what, and this is what it reads. In verse 14 of Matthew 17. It says, when you said demons. Oh no, I ain't dealing with no demons. Well, as you mature in the things of God, sometimes you're going to, you know, you his disciple. <laughs> but God, the greater one lives on the inside of you. He's going to give you the strength, the boldness. So it says this. When they approached the crowd, a man came up to Jesus, kneeling before him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic, 
moonstruck, and suffers terribly. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples. Say, he, he was demon possessed. He said, he said, he's a lunatic. And, and, and moonstruck and suffers terribly for he often falls into the fire and often, often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they were not able to heal him. And Jesus answered, this is what G Jesus got frustrated. You think we don't, you think Jesus didn't get frustrated? Keep walking with me. I'm getting ready to show you. It said, verse 17, and Jesus answered, you unbelieving and per perverted generation, how long shall you, shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to, here to me. Beloved, the disciples had given, had been given the authority. Because you know, the word of God tells us that we have the authority to shred on what? Serpents, scorpions, and all the powers of the enemy. And nothing by no means shall harm us. Now you can't, you, your carnal Christian is not going to do that. A new Christian. But as you grow and mature in the things of God. God would begin to reveal certain things to you even the more. Mm -hmm. He would give you rev revelation, and then he'd give you new revelation. Amen? So, beloved, the disciples had been given authority to heal, but they had not yet learned how to appropriate the power of God consistently. Jesus regularly became frustrated with the religious leaders as the unbelieving and unresponsive generation. Religious leaders. It's time out for religious leaders. We got to live something. We got to obey our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In order to become obedient uh, believers, we have to stay connected, in my words, to the lifeline because his word gives us life. Spiritual, you know, in this inner man. He gives us life. Hallelujah. So we can get some strength. Hallelujah. And, and when Jesus, let me ask you a question. Let me see who will answer this for me. When, when Jesus was led, it said he was led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Right? So, so what did he use? Come on, come on, pastors. Come on, ministers. What did he use to fight with? With the enemy. When he was tempting him. Tempting him. Because the Holy Spirit led him out in the wilderness. He used the what? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting. Did he use his word, his own words? The word of God, Minister Will Brown. Thank you, sir. I've been waiting on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, Pastor Norman, the word. Hallelujah. Gail Reynolds, yes, uh, first lady right there. Uh-huh, I'm speaking it. <laughs> the word of God, he used the word. So we have to use the word. He's the greatest example. Oh, God. Here his disciples were reflecting that attitude. Uh-huh. Jesus bluntly corrected the disciples, but his purpose was to, was to spur them on to greater faith. Sometimes we have to be firm, but it's to spur us. Don't get mad. I want to be all that Christ will have me to be. I had some people to say to me, prophets, say to me, uh, uh, uh. God said, stop going back and forth. In other words, your yes is yes and your no is no. He hears you as it relates to the ministry. He hears you, but he sees you. Don't, don't, he got you because you've been faithful. He has you, but it's a season. It's a time and season for everything. Hallelujah. And I know I'm in the season. I, he didn't brought so many confirmations. Hallelujah. Verse 18 through 20 of Matthew 17 goes on to say, praise God, praise God. Verse 18 to 20 of Matthew 17 goes on to say this. It said, Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the boy was healed at once. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately, privately and asked, why could we not drive it out? This is what he said. He said, he answered, because of your little faith, your lack of trust and confidence in the power of God. For I assure you and most solemnly say to you, if you have living, if you have living faith 
the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, hallelujah, move from here to there. And if it is God's will, it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. But this kind of demon does no, not go out except by prayer and fasting. Beloved, the disciples have been unable to drive out the demon. And they asked Jesus why. He said the quality of their faith was insufficient. Hallelujah. The power of God plus our faith is what moves obstacles and heals people. To the disciples, the mustard seed was the smallest particle imaginable. Jesus said that even faith as small or undeveloped, even faith as small and undeveloped as a mustard seed would have, would have been sufficient. It is evident, beloved. The disciples tried to drive out the demon with their own ability rather than God. Even a little faith has great potential when we trust in God's power to act, hallelujah. If we feel weak or powerless, our Christian, as Christians, we should examine our faith, making sure we are trusting God's power, not our own ability to produce results, hallelujah. Because I come by to tell you, my sister, I come by to tell you, my brother, we can do nothing without God. Philippians 4 verse 13 says, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So it's not our strength. He gets all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We just have to be determined. We're going to get in his word and study According to 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved. A workman needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You say, Pastor, I can hardly read. Well, I come by to tell you, pray that God would send someone your way that perhaps have a little money, hallelujah. That will buy you some CDs or deep whatever it is out there now. And be able to download or whatever you need to do. And ask the Holy Spirit to give you clear insight. How many believe that he'll do it? Won't he do it? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who God is a good God. My sisters and brothers. If you are facing problems that seem as big and immovable as a mountain, turn your eyes from the mountain and look to Jesus for more faith. Hallelujah. You say more faith. Faith. More. God, I need you. Help me. Who, Lord? Help me, God. More faith. Yes. Then you will be able to overcome the obst obstacles that stand in your way. If you agree with me, say amen. Or type amen, hallelujah. You say, Pastor, if I say amen, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna hear me. No, I hear you in the spirit. Verse 21 through 23 of Matthew 17. Jesus communes with his disciples about his death and resurrection. Can you imagine communing with your disciples about your death and resurrection? Mm. Verse 22, when they were gathering together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the son of man is going to betray and, hand it, and be handed over to men who are his enemies and they will kill him and he will, ra and he will be raised from the dead to life on the third day. And they were deeply grieved and distressed. I tell you, when I read that, I became a little grieved and distressed. Because we've seen many movies of him hanging up there. And they nailing his hands. Can you imagine nails going through your hands? Them thorns on his head, blood coming down, thirsty, laying there, dying, suffering. And knew no suffering, never been separated from God the Father. Mm. Beloved, once again, Jesus predicted his own death. More 
I say once again because you know in Matthew 16 we were aware, aware of that as well. More important, he told of his resurrection. Unfortunately, the disciples heard only the first part of Jesus' words and became discouraged. They couldn't understand why Jesus wanted to go back to Jerusalem, where he would walk right into trouble. But I come by to tell you, sometime on this journey, it's tight, but it's right. Who he said he's take the foolish things to confound the wise. It is evident that the disciples didn't comprehend the purpose of Jesus' death and resurrection until Pentecost. They did not fully understand that Jesus' death and resurrection would make his kingdom possible. We shouldn't get upset at ourselves for being unable to understand everything about Jesus. After all, the disciples spent three years with him, saw his miracles, and heard his words, but they still had difficulty understanding Beloved, despite their questions and doubts, they believe we should do no less. Hallelujah. They were consistent and persistent. They didn't fully understand, but they believed. And they asked questions. They didn't give up. Hallelujah. Last, you say one of them did. Yeah, some of them did, but keep walking with me. Last, verse 24 through 27 talks about the tribute money. And it reads as thus. He said, when they arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the half shackle, meaning temple tax, mm -hmm, went up to Peter and said, does your teacher pay the half shackle? And meaning, in other words, does he pay temple, temple, T-E-M-P-L-E, a temple like where you serve, like we go to church, temple tax? Beloved, all at this time, all Jewish males had to pay a temple tax to support the temple's upkeep. And this is found in Exodus 30, verse 11 through 16. Tax collectors set up booths to collect these taxes. And, um, and as some may know, Matthew had been a tax collector himself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 25 through 27 goes on to say, Peter answered, yes, and when he came home, Jesus spoke to him first, saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do you do earthly rules collect duties or taxes? From their sons or from their strangers? When Peter said, from strangers, Jesus said to him, then the sons are exempt from taxation. However, so that we do not offend them, Go to the sea and throw in a hook and take the first fish that comes up. And when you open his mouth, you will find a shekel. Take it and give it to them. Beloved, it is evident that Peter answered a question, hallelujah, without really knowing the answer. Uh-huh. Putting Jesus and the disciples in an awkward uh, play, position. However, Jesus use this situation to teach Peter about Jesus' kingly role. He was teaching Peter something. Just as kings pay no taxes and collect none from their families, Jesus the king owned no, owed no taxes. But Jesus supplied the tax payment for both himself and Peter, rather than offending those who didn't understand his kingship. Mm-hmm. Although Jesus supplied the fish and the money, Peter had to go and get it. Beloved, what we must realize is that ultimately, all that we have comes to us from God's supply. But he may want us to actively participate in the process. In addition, as God's people, beloved, we must also come to the realization that we are foreigners on earth because our loyalty is always to our real king. And his name is Jesus. We are foreigners. We are just pilgrims, foreigners, just passing through here. We just got to make sure we're ready when he calls our name. He knows the beginning and he knows the end of your life. So we come, if you don't know, you know tonight that you're just a far, you're not, you in this world, but you're not of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. 
However, we still have to cooperate with the authorities and, and be responsible citizens. So that's the example that Jesus was showing Peter here. For example, another example, as ambassadors to another country keeps the local laws in order to represent well the one who sent him. We are Christ's ambassadors. So we want to represent him with as, as children of excellence. Amen. That's a, a, a great way of putting it, I believe. Second Corinthians 5 verse 20 states this. It says, so we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making his appeal through us. We as Christ's representatives plead with you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. I have a question for you to ask yourself. I want you to ask yourself, am I being a good foreigner, ambassador for him to this world? Mm -hmm. Are you asking yourself, am I being a good foreigner and or ambassador for him, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to this world or in this world? Do I represent him in excellence? That's between you and the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to study your word, God. We want to be, we want to represent you. We know we're foreigners here on this, in this world. But Lord, we want to hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter ye in. Help us to be able to say that. Say yes quickly to that question that we ask ourselves. Hallelujah. We are of excellence in your sight. We're doing all that we can do to represent you. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to study your word, to become more like you, Father. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I, the ones under the sound of my voice, God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that this word will take root in their hearts, in their minds, in their souls, in their spirits, God, that they want to be more like you, Father, in the name of Jesus, being the ambassador that you will have them to be. Oh, God, help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us to be so rooted and grounded in your word that we know we get to the place that we have no question. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name. You said in your word that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, I pray I bring Erica to you tonight. I bring many to you tonight. You know the need, God. And you promised that you would supply all I need. And we touch and agree right now for the need to be met, God. Let the hidden be revealed. And Lord, help us to love on them, God, and pray. We pray, we pray for them. Whatever it is, God, we ask, God, that you look over Brother Eddie as they tell him he's dealing with liver cancer. But Lord, we know that you're God of healing. Your healing power flow through his body from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, God. Lord, we just thank you. The ones under the sound of my voice, God, that may be going through anything anguish in their minds, depression. I bind up the spirit of depression right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you tell us in Philippians 4 verse 13, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our request be made to you, God. And you promise that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our heart and our mind through Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We cover these people, God. We pray that you allow them to most importantly feel your presence. But know that they have other believers praying for them, standing in the gap for them, God. And Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor, God. 
because you are king of king and lord of lords there is nothing too hard for you and for that we ask God that you continue to look over sister Kalita Lord touch her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet we know what the doctor is saying but Lord we know that all power belongs to you in the name of Jesus healing virtue out through her body Oh, God, if I failed to mention anyone else, Lord, you know who they are, God, and what the need is, God. So, Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To God be the glory. Whew, God, blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank God for being with you all tonight. And it is my prayer. So Brother Will, Brother Larry, uh, let me see who I'm missing here. Ha, Gail, Sister Gail, my girl, Pastor Norman, Suburban Copeland, Rita, welcome, welcome. Good to see you on. Oh, been praying for you. Hallelujah. And the ones on the line, hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord. The ones on the line and the new person that's on, they didn't say anything but we thank God for you being on tonight. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I wish each and every one of you a happy Thanksgiving. And I pray that it is a, a blessing. We know that Thanksgiving holidays can be challenging for some people because they deal with so many things during the holidays. Hallelujah. I understand more than you know, but God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Everything's in the word of God that applies to our life. So you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and just rest in him and be thankful. Just say, I give him all. I give myself away to you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I will see you here Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. Continue to pray my strength in the Lord, and I will pray your strength in the Lord. I have enjoyed this message tonight. I love you too. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me put my glasses back on. You know how it is. When you be past 50, you got you to gotta see. You got to put your extra glasses on. It's all right. It's all right. I thank God for the glasses. <laughs> I tell you, I am so uh, overwhelmed by all of you, you know, that came up. You really surprised me. Hallelujah. You came up and and supported me during the book signing. And if any of you, and, I, and some of the books will be going out, some of you still ordering, and I thank God for that. You know, God is good. Hallelujah. He is good. Rose Dixon, thank you for being on the line. She came all the way from Richmond, Virginia, and she had to leave because she doesn't like driving in the dark. She says, Pastor, you ain't got to tell all that. Well, I'm right there with you, sister. <laughs> Hallelujah. My sister, Felicia Schaffner, I thank God for her being on tonight. Uh, Kalita Butler, I don't think I missed somebody. If they don't have their name up here, I don't know. But I thank God for each and every one of you. You have a wonderful Thanksgiving. God bless you. And Sister Patricia, she celebrated her birthday. Her family celebrated her birthday. They had on gold and white. They look beautiful. And the great, the grandkids, great grandkids, and, and did I miss anything? Great, great, great grandkids. She turning 70 years old. They gave her a birthday party early. She don't even look it. She look good, y'all. Uh -huh. Single, too. Let me stop. Let me, let me stop. She's single, too, y'all. I mean, somebody laughing at me on the line. <laughs> and, And Sister Rose, she's single. She come walking in the room looking all pretty. She got that old good hair, you know, Indian hair. And she looked beautiful. If you want to know who she is, I show you. Look, look at Pastor. Let me get off here, okay? I cut up. Sister Rose, how you doing? Oh, man, She said she hope everybody have a nice Thanksgiving. To God be the glory. And Sister Pat, Sister Rose, Sister Bert, everybody sing. Let me stop. You know I'm I'm playing. There's joy. There's joy in the Lord. We gotta cut up sometime. Amen. 
Amen. You say, Pastor, you That's sing right. it. You, <laughs> you sing it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me and the Lord right now. <laughs> to God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I thank God for each and every one of you letting God use you. And I thank God for that young lady today. Really blessed me and brought tears to my eyes because it was a confirming word from the Lord. I tell you, God is a good God. Be determined that you're going to build a relationship with him and watch him do the work. Trust. The Bible said in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, and I'm going to let you go. He said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. Lord, I acknowledge you in this situation. And you said in your word, God, if I acknowledge you, you will direct my path and rest in it and watch him move. And then he'll lead in God. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You be blessed, my sister. Be blessed, my brother. Until Sunday morning, 1030 a.m. Have a blessed rest of the week. Good night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.